Senator Lauren Legarda. Senator Legarda is recognized. Thank you. That's the Committee on Foreign Relations. Thank you. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I have the honor to seek approval of three treaties, namely Senate Resolution Number 570 under Committee Report 193, resolution concurring in the ratification of the Framework Agreement on Partnership and Cooperation between the European Union and its member states of one part and the Republic of the Philippines of the other part. Senate Resolution 571 under Committee Report Number 194, Resolution concurring in the ratification of the agreement between the Republic of the Philippines and the Federal Republic of Germany on Social Security. And Senate Resolution Number 572 under Committee Report 195, Resolution concurring in the ratification of the agreement on Social Security between the Republic of the Philippines and the Kingdom of Sweden. First, Philippine-EU Partnership and Cooperation Agreement. It has always been in the interest of our country to establish and fortify formal relations with international partners that will protect and improve the welfare of Filipinos here and abroad. Our August Chamber has never been remiss in initiating and supporting efforts to achieve this goal. The Philippines and the EU have long established diplomatic relations since 1964, and this partnership has matured and evolved over the years. The EU remains to be a robust economic partner of the Philippines. In 2016, our country was ranked as the EU's fourth largest trading partner, fourth export market, the fifth import supplier. For the first half of 2017, total Philippine merchandise exports amounting to 4.38 billion euros comprised 14.9% of overall exports to the EU which made the EU our second largest export partner during this period. Moreover, foreign direct investments or FDIs from the 28 EU member states represent the largest FDIs in our country, supporting over 500,000 Filipino jobs. The EU also continues to prove to be a committed development partner. As of June 2017, the EU ranks fourth among sources of grants from Official Development Assistance, ODA, and eighth among the combined sources of loans and grants of ODA. The EU's total ongoing ODA portfolio to the Philippines amounts to 190.48 million euro, comprising of 10 grants. The EU is also a major contributor to the Mindanao Trust Fund, a multi-donor grant facility that consolidates international development assistance for the recovery of conflict-affected communities in Mindanao, and a committed member of the international monitoring team in our peacekeeping keeping efforts of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. In addition, the EU is home to an estimated 700,000 to 800,000 of our Kababayans. The largest Filipino communities are in Italy, the United Kingdom, and Greece. The EU is the third largest source of remittances from overseas Filipinos and is the fifth largest source of tourists in the Philippines. The legal basis of our ties with the EU is still a 37-year-old agreement that does not truly reflect this dynamic partnership. It is time we bring this relationship up to date through the PCA. The agreement commits the Philippines and the European Union and its member states to pursue dialogue in 41 areas of cooperation which include combating terrorism, human trafficking, and illicit drugs, countering the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, small arms, and light weapons, protecting human rights, encouraging environmental sustainability, reducing the impact of climate change, promoting development cooperation and capacity building and technical cooperation initiatives, exchange of experts in the areas of science, technology, statistics, food and drugs. The PCA will also bolster our status as a beneficiary country under the EU's generalized scheme of preference plus and provide basis for concluding a free trade agreement with the EU. The prospective FTA aims to enhance market access for goods, services and investments for the two sides, thereby ensuring benefits for our micro, small and medium enterprises which comprise 99.5% of total businesses and employ 61.6% .6 
of the total workforce in the country. The PCA allows both parties to address issues and challenges in a more coherent, efficient, and sustainable manner. It provides an overarching mechanism for formal and regular dialogue between the Philippines and the EU. Without the PCA, what we currently have is an ad hoc dialogue in the form of the Philippine-EU Senior Officials Meeting, SOM, and its working groups, which do not meet regularly. Issues of concern to either the Philippines or EU are only discussed in a compartmentalized manner. Through the PCA, discussions on these issues would take place in an institutionalized mechanism, which will ensure greater coordination between the Philippines and EU. In cases of dispute on any of the issues covered by the agreement, the PCA provides that both parties shall resort to dialogue through the Joint Committee with a view of seeking a mutually acceptable solution. The entry into force of the framework agreement will not necessitate the introduction of any new legislation, as it does not create any new legal commitments and the language is expressed in general, general terminologies. Upon the PCA's entry into force, a joint committee composed of the Philippines and EU senior officials will be established. The joint committee will set out the priorities within the framework of cooperation, provide recommendations for promoting the objectives of the agreement, monitor and oversee the proper functioning of the agreement. Each party may refer to the joint committee for any divergence with the application or interpretation of the PCA. Given the current realities of our bilateral relations with the EU, the Framework Agreement on Partnership and Cooperation will serve as a solid platform for dialogue to explore ways to achieve our shared goal of a stronger partnership based on mutual respect, trust, and equality. I thus seek the Senate's concurrence in the ratification of this agreement. Now let me go to the Social Security Agreements. The Philippines has also entered into social security agreements with several countries, especially those that host a sizable number of Filipinos, not only to protect the interests of our Kababayans, but also as a way to boost our diplomatic relations with other countries. Since the early 1980s, the Philippine government has undertaken negotiations on social security agreements. Among the countries that have assigned the Convention on Social Security with the Philippines are Austria, United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, Spain, France, Canada, Quebec, Switzerland, and Belgium. Now we seek to also approve our social security agreements with Germany and Sweden. Overseas Filipinos play an important role in sustaining the strength of the Philippine economy. Many of the countries where our countrymen live and work do not have social safety nets for foreign nationals, thus leaving them in a precarious situation should the need for such safety needs, safety nets arise. On the other hand, Filipinos who migrate to countries that have coverage for foreign nationals are unable to accumulate enough insurance periods to qualify for full social security pensions because they do not meet the minimum requirement for coverage. Furthermore, without a social security agreement between the Philippines and the host country, many employers risk the payment of double contributions or dual coverage when sending a worker on a temporary basis to the other country. Germany is host to more than 21,000 Filipinos. It is also a strong and strategic partner of the Philippines. It ranks as the 11th major trading partner of the Philippines worldwide. In 2016, overall trade between the Philippines and Germany amounted to 4.192 US dollars, billion US dollars, and the balance of trade was in favor of the Philippines, 394.503 million US dollars. New German investments, in particular in the IT-based service sector, are growing. German companies see the Philippines as a future market in the maritime, transport, and industrial manufacturing sectors. In 2016, investment promotion agencies approved German investments in the Philippines amounted to 4.9 billion pesos. With the exchange of notes between the Philippines and Germany, on the German-Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry on September 23, 2015, officially admitting the same as part of the German Chamber Network, German nationals are expected to invest and relocate to the Philippines. 
Thus, the Philippines-Germany Social Security Agreement, which was signed by both parties on September 19, 2014 in Berlin, is seen as beneficial to both countries as it will provide greater impetus towards the promotion of the Philippines as a retirement haven for qualified German pensioners under the Philippine Retirement Act and will also ensure that Filipinos living and working in Germany are covered with social security benefits. Meanwhile, among the Nordic countries, Sweden is our largest trading partner and the ninth largest among the European Union member states. Bilateral trade between the Philippines and Sweden in 2016 amounted to 134.29 million US dollars, slightly down from 143.40 million US dollars total trade <clears throat> registered. Despite the downturn in trade, Sweden remains confident in the Philippines given our consistent strong economic performance. Many Swedish companies have also established presence in the Philippines. A most solid illustration of Sweden's confidence in the Philippine economy is the visit to Manila in November 2016 of a 70 member Swedish business delegation headed by Swedish Minister for Enterprise and Innovation, Michael Damberg, who also presided over the reopening of the Swedish Embassy in Manila. The Philippine-Sweden Social Security Agreement was signed in Stockholm in October, on October 2015. Both the Social Security Agreements with Germany and Sweden contain standard provisions consistent with International Labor Organization Convention ILO 118 on the equality of treatment and ILO Convention 157 on the maintenance of social security rights. These agreements aim to contribute to equality of treatment, allow the portability of benefits to overseas Filipinos and nationals of the host country, and improve the processing of claims while eliminating dual coverage, among others. Mr. President, we must pursue initiatives that will help uplift the lives of our overseas workers and help secure their retirement in the twilight years. It is thus my hope that the Senate concurs in the ratification of the social security agreements with Germany and Sweden as we actively pursue similar social security agreements with other countries that have compatible social security schemes with the Philippines and home to most number of Filipino workers. Thank you, Mr. President.